Please, if there's any audience, if there's any audience in the world I should be standing for, it's you. Not you standing for me, but thank you very much. Good afternoon. You know, in February, I uh, came out here to the National Institute of Health and NI at NIH and to our Vaccine Research Center to thank all of you and the world-class doctors, scientists, researchers for the incredible work you've done during the pandemic. And uh, developing vaccines, uh, saving lives, giving us hope. Also, also continuing to give me advice on uh, developments as they occur. I've seen more <laughs> with Dr. Fauci than I have my wife. We kid each other, but uh, they look, who's president? Fauci. Um, but all kidding aside, I, I sincerely mean it. Today, I'm back to announce our action plan to battle COVID-19 this winter. Not that any of us are surprised any of you, because it's the com combined advice from all of you that we developed this plan. And it doesn't include shutdowns or lockdowns, but widespread vaccinations and boosters and testing and a lot more. There are five key actions that I want to see us take this winter. <clears throat> first of all, first is expanding the nationwide booster campaign with more outreach, more appointments, more hours, more times and sites to walk in, providing boosters shots for up to uh, 110 million Americans who are eligible for boosters. And I want to know parenthetically, I was talking to one of my uh, folks who uh, does uh, polling and, and uh, national strategy. And he said, there's some evidence in one poll, I won't mention it because I'm not positive of the number, I was told this as I was leaving the White House, that um, there is an expectation that 30% of the non-vaxxers and under no circumstances would I get a vaccination because of the new variant are now saying I'm going to get a vaccination. So we hope that's true. I hope that's true. But the second point is that launching new family vaccination clinics to make it easier for children, parents, and whole families to get vaccinated into one place and new policies to keep our children in school instead of quarantining them at home. I'll talk about the detail of each of these in a moment. The third piece of this is making free at-home tests more available than ever before and having them covered by your private insurance plans available in thousands of locations and available at community health centers and other sites for the uninsured who don't have insurance. Four, increasing our surge response team that our, our doctors, our nurses, I know the people in this audience know incredibly well about what a surge team is, but uh, medical staff into communities with rising cases and overburdened hospitals and short on personnel. And by the way, they make a gigantic difference. The governors, Republican governors as well as Democratic governors, contact me when I go into their states, talk about thank you for these surge teams because it really makes a difference in some some communities are hit so much harder than others. They just, you know, they, they, they just can't make it without and we're, what we're going to do. I'll speak to this in more detail in a second. The fifth thing we're doing we're gonna is accelerate efforts to vaccinate the rest of the world and strengthen the, uh, strengthen the international travel rules for people coming to the United States. I plan to announce, my plan I'm announcing today pulls no punches in the fight against COVID-19, and it's a plan that I think should unite us. I know COVID-19 has been very divisive in this country. It's become a political issue, which is a sad, sad commentary. It shouldn't be, but it has been. Now, as we move into the winter and face the challenges of this new variant, this is a moment we can put the divisiveness behind us, I hope. This is a moment we can do what we haven't been able to do enough of through this whole pandemic, get the nation to come together, unite the nation in a common purpose, to fight this virus, to protect one another, to protect our economic recovery, and to think of it in terms of literally a patriotic responsibility rather than a, somehow you're denying people their basic rights. I, the plan I'm announcing today is the plan our scientists and COVID teams have recommended. And while my existing federal vaccination requirements are being reviewed by the courts, this plan does not expand or add to those mandates. A plan that all Americans hopefully can rally around, and it should be and should get bipartisan support, in my humble opinion. And it should unite us, not continue to separate us. 
Parenthetically, you all know that there are literally, as it relates to whether or not we're going to pay the federal debt, whether we're going to, in fact, have a continued resolution, et cetera, some of my friends on the other team are arguing that if I don't commit that there'll never be any more mandates, they're going to let us default. In the neighborhood I come from in Claymont, they'd look at me and say, go figure, go figure. But before I explain each new action in more detail, I want to, and I'm not going to embarrass you, Doc, but I want to thank uh, Francis Collins. You know, uh, you've done an incredible job, Doc, uh, here at NIH, one of the most important scientists of our time, in my view. No, I, I'm not being solicitous. I think I'm, I'm not exaggerating a bit. After I was elected president, Dr. Collins was one of the first calls. I think you're the second call I made to ask you if you'd stay on. The second call I made. It's because when I was vice president, I got to know Dr. Collins really well when I was given the opportunity to manage the Cancer Moonshot Initiative. And Dr. Collins is an incredible resource for our nation. And I'm grateful, and I mean this sincerely, I'm grateful for everything he's done in this, for this pandemic and advancing all kinds of medical breakthroughs, including mapping the human genome. He recently announced he's going to step down as director of the NIH this month after a truly consequential tenure. But the good news really is Dr. Collins is going to return to the lab, the National Human <laughs> Genome Research Institute. And we look forward to his unmatched ability to unlock possibilities that are within our reach. And Doc, the bad news for you is you ain't getting rid of me, man. I'm going to keep calling you all the time because there's a lot of other things we can do, uh, you can do, and help me to get done. You just tell me, point me in the direction, and I'll follow. I just received a briefing from Dr. Collins and Fauci and Dr. Lawrence Tyback, as well as Dr. Julie uh, Le Ledgerwood, and uh, I appreciate it very much. My only regret was it was a short meeting, so I, because I was to come and speak. I think we would all benefit more if we had made my speech short and uh, spent more time uh, with these docs. But, at, uh, you know, uh, as they, uh, they, they study the, the Omicron variant, just uh, uh, that we have just two cases reported here in the United States. But as I explained on money, this new variant is cause for concern, but not panic. We know there be we knew there'd be cases uh, of this uh, of Omicron here in the United States, and it's here. But we have the best tools, the best vaccines in the world, and the best medicine, and the best scientists in the world. We're going to fight this variance with science and speed, not chaos and confusion. Just like we beat back COVID-19 in the spring and more powerful variant Delta variant in the summer and fall. As a result. We entered this winter from a position of strength compared to where America was last winter. <clears throat> last Christmas, fewer than 1 percent of American adults were fully vaccinated. This Christmas, that number will be 77, 72 percent, including more than 86 percent of seniors, the most vulnerable population. Last Christmas, our children were at risk without a COVID-19 vaccine. This Christmas, we have safe, effective vaccines for children aged 5 and older with 20 million children and counting now vaccinated. Last year, a majority of our schools were closed at Christmas time in that area. Now, over 99 percent of our schools are open. But I pledge to always be straight and give it just straight from the shoulder as President of the United States and tell the American people exactly where we are. So here, here it is. Experts say the COVID-19 cases are continuing to rise in the weeks ahead in this winter. So we need to be ready. You can read the whole plan we're talking about here at whitehouse.gov. Go to whitehouse.gov and it's all laid out in detail. For now, here are the five key points I want to expand on slightly. We're expanding our national booster campaign to provide booster shots to all eligible adults. Our docs and the scientists believe that people who get a booster shot are more protected than ever from COVID-19. I was just told, which is a question I got to ask, I've been meaning to ask for a long time, whether or not not just it increases the, the, uh, the resistance to the variant that is being dealt with, but it also is, it, 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 it is stronger. It not only just raises the total, but it's, it's a stronger 
makes things more powerful in terms of resisting. And the Center for Disease Control and Prevention, the CDC, the Food and Drug Administration, the FDA, and our top public officials recommend all adults, all adults get a booster shot when it's time. But here's the deal. More than about 100 million are eligible for boosters, but haven't gotten the booster shot yet. Folks, if you're over the age of 18 and you got vaccinated before June the 2nd, six months has gone by. Go get your booster now. Go get it now. Booster shots continue to be free. We've already made available 80,000 locations, coast to coast in the United States of America, 80,000 locations to get the booster. And if you want to know exactly where to go, text your zip code to 438829 to find where you can get your booster shot now, now. And starting today, we're making it easier than ever to get a booster shot. I'm calling on pharmacies, and they've been cooperative, big and small, to offer more appointments, more walk-in hours, including on weeknights and weekends, so you can get vaccinated at a time that works best for you and your family. Pharmacies will send millions of texts and emails to remind their customers to return for the booster shots because they know who got the booster shot at CVC. You get a, they get, they're, they're now they've agreed they're going to send text to that particular person when their time is up, when, when they've met the, if it's, if it's Pfizer and Moderna, it's six months, if it's J and J, two months. And to, you know, to reach our seniors, we're also collaborating with the American Association of Retired Persons, AARP, who will be reaching out to their 38 million members. They're going to make an aggressive effort. They're going to be hosting virtual town halls to answer questions on, and even arrange rides for seniors to get their booster shots. And so that will all be coming. My administration also contacted the 64, will contact the 64 million people on Medicare to remind them to get their booster shots. We have the ability to do that from the federal level. And just like I did to make it easier for folks to get their first and second shots, I'm providing paid off time for any federal employee who goes to get their booster. If the only time they can get it, the booster where they are, if it's at such and such a day in the middle of the day, they can go. All they have to do is demonstrate that's where they went or they took their son, daughter, husband, wife, mom, dad. They get paid. They don't get doctor pay. And I'm asking other employers in the private sector to do the same thing. No one should have to choose between a paycheck and getting additional protection for a booster shot. Now, I want to reiterate, Dr. Fauci and Dr. Collins believe if you're worried about Omicron variant, the best thing to do is get fully vaccinated and then get your booster shot when, when, you're, uh, when you're eligible. <coughs> excuse me. We don't yet believe, <coughs> excuse me, that additional measures will be needed. But so that we're prepared, if needed, my team is already working with officials at Pfizer, Moderna, Johnson & Johnson to develop contingency plans for other vaccines <coughs> or boosters. And I'll also direct the FDA and the CDC to use the fastest process available without cutting corners um, for safety to get such vaccines renewed, reviewed and renewed, reviewed and approved if they're needed. Second, we're expanding our efforts to vaccinate children ages five and up. For any parent worried about Omicron variant or the Delta variant, get your child vaccinated at one of the 35,000 locations in the country, including doctor's offices, pharmacies, children's hospitals, and 9,000 pop-up clinics at schools. If you're wondering where to go, again, visit vaccines.com. And today I'm announcing that we're going to launch hundreds of new family vaccination clinics across the country. These sites are going to offer vaccinations for the whole family, one stop, one stop. Children can get vaccinated, parents can get vaccinated to get their second, first or second shots or their booster shots. Family vaccination clinics will be held in community health centers and other trusted locations. Some will be mobile to reach further into hard to reach communities. If it's booster shots for adults, vaccinations for kids, all the same place at the same time. Now, you know, when we first announced, I said the logistical problem, it wasn't just we didn't have enough vaccines when we got into office, but once we got the vaccine, the logistical effort to get all communities 
in all areas vaccinated was a gigantic logistical undertaking that would make any military proud of being able to do it. But because of the incredible talent, including our military, we got that done. And we're going to do the same thing now as we continue to expand. We know parents of children under the age of five are wondering when the vaccine would be available for the little ones. That's a question I most get often asked now at functions. We had a function uh, celebrating Hanukkah and the Christmas and various things at the White House. The parents coming up to me are saying, I, I have a three-year-old. Is there going to be a time that that can, am I going to be okay? Is she going to be okay? Are he going to be okay? And let me say this, I strongly support the independent scientific view of vaccine usage for children under five. <clears throat> we can't take, take shortcuts with that scientific work, but I'll do everything in my power to support the FDA to do this safely and quickly as possible when we get to that, around that point. Vaccinating our children is also critical to keeping our schools open. But while over 99% of our schools are open now, we need to make sure that we keep that throughout the winter this winter. The CDC is now reviewing pioneering approaches like, as we call, test to stay, test to stay policies, which could allow students to stay in a classroom and be tested frequently when a positive case in that classroom popped up that wasn't them. Up to now, you get go home and you quarantine. But rather than being sent home and quarantine, they'd be able to stay by be, because the test would be available and regularly. The CDC will be releasing the latest science and other findings in the coming weeks so that other schools can learn from, an, from, from the impediment, excuse me, uh, uh, if there's any impediments in this practice, they can learn to implement exactly what the best way to do this is. It's a process. We want our children in school and we're going to take new steps to make sure they st stays that way. But again, the best step is to vaccinate your children. Get them vaccinated. The third, this winter we're going to make free at home tests more available to Americans than ever before. To better detect and control the Delta variant, I made testing more available, affordable, and convenient. I used the Defense Production Act to increase production of rapid tests, including at home tests. When I came into office, none of these tests were on the market. Thanks to our actions and the work of all of you, we now have at least eight at home testing options and prices for those tests are coming down. But it still isn't good enough in my view. That's why I'm announcing that health insurers must cover the cost of at-home testing. So that if you're one of the 150 million Americans with private health insurance, next month your plan will cover at-home tests. Private insurers already cover the expensive PCR test and that you get at the doctor's office. And now they will cover at home test as well. Now, for those not covered by private insurance, we're going to make available free tests at thousands of convenient locations, locations for folks to pick them up and take a test kit home. The bottom line, this winter, you'll be able to test for free in the comfort of your home and have some peace of mind. This is on top of the 20,000 sites already around the country, like pharmacies, where you can go in and get tested for free. We have to keep this going. Fourth, we're going to continue to help communities that experience rising cases this winter and improve the care, the care for those who get COVID-19. Since this summer, we've worked with Republican and Democratic governors, as many Republican governors as Democratic governors, to deploy what we call surge response teams. These teams work. They provide needed staff for staff overruns, uh, 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 the, the badly needed staff where overrun hospitals are handling more patients than they can, they, they can handle for their emergency rooms and intensive care units who don't have the personnel available. They help provide life-saving treatments to communities in need like monoclonal uh, uh, antibody treatments. We have over 20 teams deployed now. Today, I'm announcing that we're going to triple that, more than double it. We're going to get to 60 teams ready to deploy in states to experience a surge in cases over the course of this winter. I was just with a governor in Minnesota who was raving about the positive impact it's had on his state. But there's other states the same, in the same circumstance. Additionally, we're increasing the availability of new medications recommended 
by real doctors, not conspiracy theorists, okay? For example, monoclonal antibody treatments have been shown to reduce the risk of hospitalization by up to 70 percent. And uh, for unvaccinated people at risk of developing severe disease. We've already distributed over 3 million courses of this treatment to save lives and reduce the strain on hospitals. And we're, we're, we, we have promising new arrival pill, uh, excuse me, antiviral pills uh, on the horizon that could help prevent hospitalizations and death for people infected by COVID-19. We've secured enough supply of these pills already, and early indications are that these treatments will remain effective in the face of Omicron. We don't know that for sure yet, but that's the hope and expectation. And like with the distribution of the vaccines, we will ensure that these medicines will be available to the hardest hit communities in America as well. Fifth and finally, as we've seen with COVID-19 and the Delta variant, and now with Omicron variant, all that emerged elsewhere, it all came from somewhere else. And ultimately, beat this pan to, to beat this pandemic, we need to go to where it came from in the rest of the world. We also need to vaccinate the rest of the world. America has, in my view, continues to lead in that effort. We've shipped for free more vaccines around the world than all other countries in the world combined, every other country combined. Over 280 million vaccines so far to 110 countries including South Africa, where we delivered all the doses they requested. Now, today I'm announcing that we'll accelerate the delivery of more vaccines to countries that need it, pledging to deliver 200 million dose, more doses within the next 100 days, on our way to delivering more than 1 billion 200 million doses for the rest of the world. Let me be clear, there's not a single vaccine dose America ever sends to the rest of the world will ever come at the expense of any American. I'll always make sure that our people are protected first, but vaccinating the world is not just a, a moral tool, a moral obligation that we have in my view. It's how we protect Americans, as we're seeing with this new variant. America is doing our part, and we'll do more. But this is a global pandemic, and everyone needs to fight it together. And that includes countries we're helping that aren't particularly friendly toward us. Their populations are in trouble. To their credit, the scientific community, particularly in South Africa, quickly notified the world of the emergence of this new variant. This kind of transparency is to be encouraged and applauded because it increases our ability to respond quickly to any new threats. And that's what we did. On the very day the World Health Organization identified the new variant, I took an immediate step to restrict travel from the countries in, South, in Southern Africa. But while we know the travel restrictions can slow the spread of Omicron, they cannot prevent it. But it does give us a little more time to take more precautions at home to prepare. A month ago, we announced requirements that foreign travelers must be vaccinated if entering the United States. This week, I announced an additional action to strengthen international travel rules to give us more time to stop the spread and study a new variant. It used to be that international travel flying to the United States, traveler flying to the United States, had to test negatively three days before their departure from the, uh, that country. Well, I'm announcing today that all inbound international travelers must test within one day of departure regardless of their vaccination status or nationality. This tighter testing timetable provides an added degree of protection as scientists continue to study the Omicron variant. And we are extending the requirement, both internationally and domestically, to wear masks for travel on aircraft, trains, public transportation through the winter months. I'll close with this. Again, the actions I'm announcing are ones that all Americans can rally behind and should unite us in the fight against COVID-19. And they come from a position of strength. We are better positioned than we were a year ago to fight COVID-19. Since day one of my administration, we've been doing everything we can to beat this virus. 
And that's what we have to keep doing. That's how we keep our country and our businesses and our schools open. And that's how, even with the pandemic, we've generated record job creation, 5.6 million new jobs since January 20th, more than any president in American history. We're on the track to the fastest economic growth in four decades, in four decades. We move forward in the face of COVID-19 and the Delta variant. And we'll move forward in the face of Omicron variant as well. And we'll do it by keeping the faith and doing it together as the United States of America. Let me close again by saying God bless our doctors, our scientists, and all of you here at NIH for what you're doing for the country and, quite frankly, for the world. You're the best. You're the very, very best. And God bless you all. Thank you for your patience and listening to me. Thank you.